All right, there's an alert up there. Warren Buffett, 22% uh, stake in Burlington Northern. I guess that's new news. And we put it up on the alert. Let's bring in our market experts, Bob Froelich of DWS Investments, Peter Schiff, Europe Pacific Capital, Jim LeCamp, RBC Wealth Management. Gentlemen, I want to ask some Peter Schiff, if nationalization is such a great idea, I mean, it reminds me, it's pre-Thatcher England, Western Europe, and the Soviet Union, Peter, but look at this. Britain is going to nationalize their banks. So you know what their banks did today? Lloyd's down 31%. Barclays down close to 20%. Get this, RBS, Royal Bank of Scotland, the ADRs here in the States, down 69%. What the hell's so good about nationalizing banks? How's that going to fix our banking system and our stock market and our economy, Peter? You don't have to sell me, Larry. I'm on board with this. I, I thought mean, you I... were a big nationalizer. You're it's... a big government guy. <laughs> This is going to make it worse. You know, what I said last time I was on this program, most of the U.S. financials, probably all of them, are already worthless. There is no value whatsoever in the common stock of Citi or even Bank of America. All the value now rests in the preferred share that the government is accumulating. And every time these companies announce more and more losses and they get a bailout, the bailout isn't free. The government gets more preferred stock. So at the end of the day, there is no value in the common. Anybody who's buying stock in any of these financials, they might as well flush their money down the toilet. I There's mean, nothing there. You look at these numbers. Okay, State Street had terrible numbers. It turns out Custodial Bank, they own subprime and toxic assets. They're off 59%. PNC Financial, 42%. Bank of America, another winner, 29%. Nationalize them, Wells Fargo, 24 JP Morgan. <sighs> Chase 21, Citigroup 21. We're moving towards zero, Bob Froelich, on all these banks. What is up here? How do we get out of this? Yeah. Well, you know, we know what got us into it. Uh, you know, it was a lot of greed, a lot of misunderstanding of risk, and a lot of leverage. And what's going to get us out of it is we have to have some confidence back in the system. The only way, the absolute only way you get confidence back is not nationalizing the banking system. It is segregating those toxic assets. I don't care what we call it, whether it's a resolution trust corporation part two or whatever. But to, in order to get the banks lent, they have money. They have money How about in their let balance them go broke? To get them... They, they have money on their balance sheet. Just take a look. The money is there. Who said we just let have to get broke? to me. Who, Let's have confidence by letting the incompetent companies fail so that we can have confidence in the new companies that emerge to take their place. What? Entrenching these incompetent managers does nothing to restore confidence. It does I, the I would agree, but the problem is we're not entrenching the incompetent managers. We already threw them out the door. No, we didn't. And no, then no, we, we didn't. All, we took a couple, of, a couple of big well, guys city left, they are, but, but they're city. all still there. They're still there. The guy at B of A is still there. Jim McCann. Let me bring you in. I want to raise a different subject, okay? Let's move on from banks. One of the amazing things today, in a, a terrible down day, where all the cyclicals, Jim, all the pro-growth cyclical sectors, which had been performing well off the November 20 bottom, they got slammed again, plus the financials. But we're talking about retailers, uh, commodities, tech, industrials, energy. Now, Jimmy, construction and engineering. All right, Obama spends two paragraphs today talking about his infrastructure play. They got killed. They got slaughtered. They were down 8% today, and they were down, they're now down 13% from the peak. And let me walk through this. Shaw Group off 13%, URS off 9%, Jacobs off 9%, Floor off 7%. Now, we all on Wall Street, or all Wall Street, I don't like the word we, was counting on the construction infrastructure play. This getting clobbered right now. Why is that? There's two reasons. Wall Street's saying loud and clear they do not like the new plans coming in. And if Wall Street says it loud and clear, he may have a harder time selling these plans. There's a lot of money involved, and a lot of Democrats have exp expressed displeasure with the size of this plan. Beyond that, Larry, there's $150 billion in hedge fund redemptions that occurred last month. I think there's still a tremendous amount of forced sales going on on Wall well, why Street. Why are they selling Margin infrastructure calls. stocks? Why are they selling infrastructure? Look, I have to they think because that the infrastructure program is vastly overrated. Government resource transfers do not create new jobs and wealth, at least in the long run. But everybody was convinced on Wall Street, everybody was convinced that infrastructure was the place to be. Now it's getting slammed. I'm trying to find out why. Why, why, why? Well, because Wall Street, the is, Wall Street is saying they don't like the plans. Wall Street's saying very loud and clear they don't like the plans. And a lot of Democrats are saying, well, wait a minute, that really is too much money. So there's this growing 
I'm concerned no, that he's going to have a hard time selling these money. plans. They're going to pour more money. You know what? I Peter mean, Schiff, a... Obama didn't even talk about his faux tax cuts today, Peter. Figure that out. Well, and I he think... had some class warfare specials well, about well-to-do people, prosperous people. Heaven forbid we should have rich people in this economy yeah, well, the, you know, who are interesting... getting killed in this downturn anyway. Yeah. That couldn't have been good. Well, you know, the interesting part about his speech, he talks about shared sacrifice or rolling up our sleeves and getting back to work. But if you look at the meat of his, of his economic program, it's to get more credit to consumers so they can borrow and spend more money. How is that sacrifice? How is going to the mall and buying more stuff that you can't afford? Right. How is that asking for sacrifice? We're going to come back. We're going to lose Mr. LeCamp. Mr. LeCamp, big bear that you are, what's your favorite? What do you do right now? We're going to lose you to technology or something, uh, aerospace. What do you do here? You got to stick with bonds right now. The bondholders are going to get paid before the stockholders do. They're senior to it, and at least you get paid while you wait. Uh, the corporate bonds and municipal bonds are providing much better value right now than the stock market, so that's where you need to be. Do these preferred shares owned by the government come before or after the bonds of these banking companies? They they come. Uh, the the bonds are senior to the preferred. Right. No, oh, the bonds are senior to the preferred, so that's why right. you wanted people to buy them. But do you that's think right. these banks are going to stay solvent? Are you talking, would you actually buy Citigroup bonds? Would you buy Bank of America bonds right now, Jim LeCamp? I think you can just find better value elsewhere. I, I have been looking at some of these financial per, uh, preferreds and these tarp preferreds, but I, I, I think you can find better value elsewhere, particularly in the municipal market. All right, municipal bonds. Jim LeCamp, thank you, buddy. We'll see you later on. Uh, in the week. Bob Froelich's going to stay with us. Peter Schiff's going to stay with us. Coming up, CNBC's own... Now, we're back with Robert Froelich and Peter Schiff. Peter Schiff, I, I know down the road you're worried about inflation, but I just want to note, commodities have been falling lately. There was a little bit of a bounce up in commodities, which made me think maybe the global economic story was stabilizing. But commodities have been falling last uh, bunch, eight or nine days. They are, what, they're about uh, four or five, they're about 7% uh, off their peaks, Peter. What do you make of that? It looks like more deflation going on here. Look, look, I just think it's a temporary sell-off in commodities. Look at the price of gold. It was up about another $20 today, despite the temporary strength in the dollar. In fact, gold made record highs today ag against a number of key foreign currencies, particularly the British pound. If you look at the Dow Jones, the Dow closed at 9.4 ounces of gold. That's a new low for the bear market. The fact that gold is so strong in the face of commodity prices temporarily falling and the temporary strength of the dollar speaks volumes to me. Mm -hmm. And that shows that people are getting wise to the cons being pulled off by these central banks. They understand that it's inflation all the way and that is a problem. Newmont Mining up uh, 4% today alone. Okay, Dr. Bob, let me switch gears though. Look. I'm still going to maintain against this horrible news and a disappointing inauguration speech, I think, is how this is going to be judged at the end of the day. The but market judged it. The market's clearly judged it badly. But look, the fear spreads in the credit markets have been falling, falling, falling. LIBOR, TED spread, two-year swaps, whatever. The inflation rate, uh, nobody much covered it last Friday. But the CPI is now zero. And the energy tax cut, the retail gas at the pump tax cut is huge. And the Fed is expanding the money supply rapidly for the first time in a couple of years. So I still believe it is possible that we could have a better economy this year than people think. I, I think it's more than possible. I think it's probable. And I will tell you, what we don't have anymore is patience. It, it, these things take patience to work. Monetary policy, the, the Fed moves rates, the stock market responds immediately, but it takes time to work its way into the economy. We have 500 basis points coming in the pipeline. Yes, we know there's not a lot of confidence, but I know one thing, Larry. Monetary policy works. I also know that fiscal policy works. We've got a lot of fiscal you throw enough money at a problem, some of it's going to stick, some of it's going to work. And I'll tell you that, yes, I, I know consumers are worried right now. They're worried about their job. But this is the largest energy tax cut in the history of the human race. What do you buy? The economy is not going to improve because of this plan. We might dig ourselves into a deeper hole, but that's it. It might look like things are getting better as we spend ourselves into a bigger bankruptcy. But this is all an illusion. And you don't solve economic problems by printing money. You solve problems by working hard by saving, by producing, the exact opposite of what we're trying to do. But Peter, it is true. Uh, I agree with you. The Fed can create money, but they can't create production and investment. But it is true. 
that the drop in world oil prices is very positive for corporate profits, right? Their cost structure comes way down. And the drop in retail gasoline prices is a very positive tax cut for consumers. That's you assuming, Larry, that. that's assuming that the drop is permanent. What I'm saying is this drop is temporary. Well, it's permanent it's not... for six or eight months. It's well, going to so have what? an effect. I mean, for look, two look, years, it's permanent. It's not coming back. I mean, you don't How see do you it. know that? How this, do you know, this, How do you know that the prices demand. won't rise as fast this. as they fell? I know that we may have trouble in the United States, but it's a heck of a lot better than what's going on no, in it's Europe. Not. With no, it's Ireland's not. No, it's not. deficit at 11% of GDP, England at 9% of GDP, Spain but, at 6% of GDP. But we're the debtor we, nation. We're basis, borrowing we're from everybody. We're in better shape than they no, are. No, we're not. We're in worse yes, shape. Yes, we are. This well, no, we're the ones that are borrowing from the rest of the world. Just real quick. I want to buy health care. I think health care is going to be a defensive plan. You're not worried about nationalizing health care? I don't think we're too many other things on the agenda. Controls. Uh, too many other things on the agenda. Also, selectively financials. I'm telling you right now, I believe in this uh, this country. I believe in our financial system. A year from now, people are going to say, yes, I have some downside risk still, but there's tremendous upside. Well, what is it potential. that you believe in? Hey, Peter Schiff, let me ask you somebody. What breaks my heart is all this news about nationalizing banks in uh, Britain, right? This is the end of the Thatcher, the end of the Thatcher regime. It's she was the one that denationalized all those industries, steel, coal, newspapers, financials. Look what we are now. Yeah, and we're the doing the same thing to... here with Reagan. I mean, this are is we not... doing the same thing. We're going to unroll, you know, completely roll back Reagan. Is that what's going to happen, Peter? Yeah, this is this is that the free market is the problem. Greed and capitalism is the problem and government oversight, government control, of the economy. Bureaucrats are the answers to our problem. I'll and tell it's you the what. exact opposite. I heard some of that today in Obama's speech, and I didn't like it, okay? I don't think the speech was all bad, but I heard some of that. I will tell you this. If he goes down the far-left path, the voters will take action in the next election in 2010, and they'll come back again in 2012. I believe Let's hope that. so. All right, buddy. Bob Froelich, thank you ever so Thanks, much. Larry. Peter Schiff, as always, you're very kind. Coming up on his first day in office, stocks gave President Obama.